Today I'm going to show you how to make your very first art print with the Epson EcoTank 8550. Now this tutorial is perfect for beginners, so if you have no experience using this particular type of printer or any printer at all, I'm going to walk you through every step of the process. We're going to go over what types of papers I suggest using to get the best bright bold colors and exactly what settings to use in Photoshop to get everything to turn out like you want it to. Also this tutorial is for after you've done all of the initial setup. It's in this guide provided by Epson. So Epson shows you in here how to connect your printer through the Wi-Fi to your computer or even use a computer cable, how to get all of the ink loaded as well as the software that you need to download from Epson to be able to have your computer communicate with your printer properly. So I'm expecting that all of that has been done prior to this tutorial so that way you can make your first art print. We will be using the Epson Photo Paper Glossy. This is the cheapest acceptable paper that I think to use in this printer for art prints. If you want the colors to come out really bright and bold and make sure to check the links in the description for this paper but also other types of paper that I recommend using. This printer has two trays to load the paper in. There is a rear tray up here. You just pop this tab up and pull up and then the paper will load in here. I'm going to show you how to load paper in this tray here in just a second. The other tray is down here. You just pop this down and then you pull straight out. We're going to load paper in the rear sheet feeder first. When you're handling glossy paper, you need to be careful of your fingerprints because they can get on the paper and then this can cause the ink to not look as good when it's transferred onto the paper by the printer. But also you just don't want a lot of fingerprints on your photo paper when customers purchase it, let's say in your art fair booth or even online. So what I like to do is pull this out and just handle it by the edges. Also, if you have a pair of cotton gloves, you can use those, but I think most people don't, especially beginners. And so I'm just kind of showing how I'm handling it. And I'm trying my best to not touch it on the face to get a bunch of fingerprints everywhere. So then I have a couple of sheets here, you can see three sheets. So I'm gonna just go ahead and stick these in here. Do you see these little plastic parts here? These are the guides that you wanna have right up against the edges of the print. If you don't have them up against there, let's say you put the paper in and then it's like this, the paper is gonna feed in all wonky and you're gonna be having a lot of sheet feeder issues. So you wanna make sure these are snug, but not to where it's denting the paper. I'm just gonna pull one of these sheets out because I don't need all those in that feeder. But similarly, with this bottom tray, you load the paper in, but instead of it being face up, you actually want the paper face down. And you can tell on all of their glossy paper, it always will have words on the back, like it'll say Epson, or it might say the type of paper by Epson on the back. So in this front sheet feeder, you always want the paper printing side to be face down. So it is the opposite up here, face up on the rear tray and face down on the front tray. And on this front tray, there's also guides in here, but the maximum width that this tray gives you is eight and a half inches wide. And that's the size of this paper because I'm printing on an eight and a half by 11 size sheet of paper. So if you had a smaller sheet, these would need to be pushed in smaller, but they're at their widest opening because this is the largest it will take. And you can tell too that this paper can be moving back and forth in here. What I found is if you slide it all the way forward, that is best. And then in order to load it, you just close this. Now, one other thing I do wanna mention with this rear feeder is this is where you put your larger sheets. It will take up to 13 by 19 inches in size. And so if you have a much larger sheet, you would just make sure to move these out all the way so that you could load that larger sheet and then make them a snug fit here. Now, if you're printing with the rear paper feeder, you can select your paper size and type here. So I have eight and a half by 11 and I'm printing on the glossy paper. You can see there's a lot of different options in here, but mine is glossy. Next, I'm gonna show you the settings in Photoshop to get the best print quality. And I would suggest that if you don't have Photoshop, if you're trying to make art prints as a business for yourself and you're really serious about this, then you should go ahead and pay for Photoshop because the programs that come with the printer and just come on your your computer naturally aren't going to give you as much control over editing the print colors and everything to match your paintings and to match what you're seeing on screen as well as Photoshop will. So it's worth paying for the extra software. So I have my artwork pulled up that I'm wanting to print. So what you're going to do is go to file and print. 
Up here in this printer setup box, you're going to want to select the printer that you're going to be printing with. I have several printers here, as you can see, but we are going to select the 8550. Now you might only see one there if you only have one printer. Then what you're going to want to do is go down here to the color management box. Now don't skip this step because this is where you're going to get the colors to turn out the way you want them to look. By default, it will say printer manages colors. You do not want the printer to manage your colors. You want Photoshop to manage them. So go ahead and select that. Then this is the next important step. You've got to get the correct printer profile. These are what are called ICC profiles, technically. You want to select the profile that matches the paper you're using in the printer. So you're going to see several profiles here. Now, you can see on mine, I have a lot because I have all of these other printers. And you may see a lot of different things in yours too. But you're looking for the ones that say Epson ET8550. So in this case, we are printing with their glossy photo paper. So it's called Photo Glossy is what we select. If you don't see the printer profiles in there, not to worry because I have a tutorial that I'm going to link in the description that shows you how to fix this. Then what you do is go into print settings up here in the printer setup box. Down to printer options, open that tab, and there is a, another box here that says print settings. You want to make sure to open this because you need to make sure that your media type is set correctly and that you have the print quality set correctly. So what we're going to do is print from the rear paper feeder first. So we're going here. Now we also have the option to do cassette two. Cassette two is that front loaded paper that we did, but we're going to make our print with the rear feeder and all of these steps that you do, whether you want to print out of the front cassette or that rear paper feeder, they are the same in Photoshop. And so I'm not going to show you how to make both prints twice because it's really the same thing. But in this case, we're going to select the rear paper feeder because that's just the one I want to test out today in the video. And the photo paper glossy is the one that we're using today. You can see there's quite a few other different types of paper that it accepts. Also, you want to make sure your print quality is set to high quality. If it's at draft or just quality, it's not going to make nearly as nice prints. Hit OK. Hit Save. And then you want to select how many copies you want to make up here. I'm only doing one and you can also select the size down here. So let's say you wanted to make it smaller or bigger. You can do that down here, but we're going to go ahead and leave it the way I have it set. I'm just going to hit print. What's cool about this printer is the tray up here that it is going to put the paper out on it automatically comes out. And you can see now it is making the print. And here is our finished print, all looking good, colors as expected. If you found this video helpful and you want to learn more about making your own art prints, I have a playlist. It's basically a free course right here on YouTube that gives you lots of information, helpful tips and advice on making your prints, making them better quality, getting them to look amazing. Check that out here. All right. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.